This is Pastor Bob Yandian. I've sat by the beds of many who went on to be with the Lord, part of our church, or maybe not even part of our church. But those that knew Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior had such a wonderful passing to the other side. Even saw Jesus, even saw angels. This is dying grace. Not, listen, grace doesn't stop in your life. It goes right on through death and right on into eternity. What a great blessing we're going to have today as we study God's Word together. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and study the Word of God with Bob Yandian. Welcome today to Student of the Word. So glad to have you with us. I'm offering a series on this one called Types of Grace, but I'm going to isolate one of them today. The types of grace that God has given us, there's five of them. I think five is the number of grace. But grace, again, five different times. There's convicting grace, that when you hear the gospel, it's the Holy Spirit that convicts you, but the grace of God convicts you. All right. Next of all is quickening grace. The moment that you receive Jesus as Savior, you're made alive. That's quickening grace. The third one is living grace. From the time you're born again all the way until the time you die, you are under living grace. Then when you die, you're under dying grace. I mean, from the time that you're, you know, you find out you're dying and you might have a few days, dying grace accompanies you there and follows you all the way through that. And then the moment you actually die and go to heaven, you enter surpassing grace, grace beyond the wildest imagination. I'm going to isolate today dying grace. And the reason why is, you talk to Christians, they say, I know I'm born again, I'm going to go to heaven. But man, I, I really kind of fear dying. I don't know if I want to die. I, don't, I wish the rapture would come and get me out of here. And honestly, the ones who should be afraid of dying is the world. And honestly, the way we should look at it is it's just a promotion from earth to heaven to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, to live as Christ, but to die as gain. In other words, as great as life is, as prosperous as life is, as joyful as life is, it's a drop in the bucket compared to heaven. And even Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if all we have is hope in this life, we are of all men most miserable. What he was saying was, man, life is great. Jesus is wonderful. Grace is great. And walking in his health and walking in his goodness and hearing his voice, that's incredible. But heaven is going to totally surpass what we could ever have on this earth. That's why heaven's called surpassing grace. But the transition point between this life and heaven heaven is dying. And God did not intend dying to be something we are afraid of, shake when we think about it, go, no, 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 approach it in fear. Because really, honestly, that's what the world is supposed to do. Every type of grace, convicting grace, quickening grace, living grace, dying grace, and surpassing grace is ministered to us by the Holy Spirit. He's the one who convicts us when we hear the word of God. He's the one who quickens us when we're born again. He's our daily life. We live through the power of the Holy Spirit, and then dying grace is the presence of the Holy Spirit with us, taking us into heaven. And surpassing grace will be the presence of God forever and forever in heaven. So all grace is ministered to us by the Holy Spirit. But let's talk about and isolate dying grace. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 2. While you're turning there again, if you're watching me for the first time today, welcome. Glad to have you. If you're watching me for the second or third time, something must have been good the first time for you to come back the second or the third time. And for you gluttons for the word of God that watch me continually, Wow, thank you so much. You begin to find out you can actually live a fun life in the midst of an unfun world. You can be in life and be stable in the midst of an unstable world because of the word of God. And so again, thank you. And then on top of that, above all that, out of that group of people, all these groups of people, I have a group on there that really partners with me in this ministry. And you consider this so much that not only do you wanna just take it in every day, you wanna help me spread it. Because it's one thing to take in the word of God and enjoy it. But on the other hand, say, I want to help other people find this. If God did this for me, he'll do it for anybody. And so you become contributors on a monthly basis into this ministry. Not only by your prayers, which I trust God, you're praying for me long before you ever give. Not only with your encouraging words, which that should be there too, but also with the actions of giving. Because money represents you and your life. To give of your finances is to give of your life. I mean, you go to work, you put your effort, blood, sweat, and tears into that job, and then you get a paycheck. And to actually take part of that and give it to God in, in tithes, then but to give it to Pastor Bob in offerings, thank you so much. I don't want to forget you. 
I'm thankful for you. And so if you'd like to become a partner with me, this ministry means more to you than just about any ministry you've found. I'm not saying that this is the same for everybody, but for you it is. Then that heart connection you have, the moment you heard this, you would, oh, I like that. I like the way that Bob teaches. And uh, so you, it makes it become so much a part of your life. Now you want to give to, go to my website, bobyandian.com. You'll find a place on there where you can become a partner with me. And I'm looking forward to you doing that. Hebrews chapter two, take a look at verses 14 and 15. And I'm gonna leave out just a little part of it. I'm gonna start with the word that, that through death. He, Jesus Christ, might destroy him who had the power of death, that's Satan. That is the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Listen, if you're fearful of death, you're living under bondage. It's like someone's over you that is your master and you are the slave to it. And this verse says it doesn't have to be that way. And Jesus Christ destroyed the works of Satan on the cross, gave us authority through his name. Why in the world should you be afraid of death? Death is just a transition from this point to that point. I've been by many people's dying beds as I pastored for 33 years, and to see the glory of people that trusted God. I mean, these weren't just your people that came to church once in a while, and they were fearful of what was going on, because some Christians are, because they don't understand what the word has to say about it. But those Christians who understood death looked forward to it. My mom at 91, when she died, prayed daily for to go to heaven. And when we'd come see her, she even asked us one time, my sister and I, would you pray that, that I'll die? And I said, mom, I don't even know where to start that prayer. So my sister said, why don't you pray and we'll agree with you? So she said a sweet prayer and said, Lord, I think I've lived my life out. I just want to go home to be with you. It wasn't just a week or two after that that she died. So again, the beauty of it is, is it's a transition. And when my dad died, he just fell over dead in the front yard. I mean, he was in fine health and all that, just fell over dead. And my mom said, the look on his face, I wasn't there. She said was of, of glory. She, he, she said, look like, <gasps> like this. And she said, it was a beautiful thing to see. She said, I miss him. But man, that look on his face, he must have seen Jesus. He saw all the angels of heaven. He saw people before him that had gone on to be with the Lord. And so my mom went about 22 years later and died and went to be with the Lord. And there's coming a time I'll be gone if Jesus doesn't come and I don't see the rapture of the church, then I'll die and go into heaven. But I'm not fearing that. In fact, there's a times you look forward to it. The older you get, the less connected to the world you are, but the more connected to heaven you are. And through the years, as you do that, you become less and less connected to the world and more and more connected to Jesus. And finally comes a day you just want to walk away from this and go to be with Jesus in heaven. Charles Caps, when he died, actually the Lord told him what day he was going to die. It was going to be on a Sunday. And he said, I'm going to die on Sunday. Contacted all of his friends. If you want to come see me, come see me on Saturday. And they all came by the droves and everything. But the next day when they went into, the, into his room, he was dead. Went on to be with the Lord. Peacefully passed over to the other side. That's the way it's supposed to be. To live in this life and be controlled by peace, being justified by faith. We have peace. And then the keys to peace that are found in Peter, where he talks about, you know, that all these things contribute to your peace. And on top of that, to take that peace through death and then enter into a whole dominion of peace called heaven is just wonderful. We're guarded by the peace of God and no longer by fear of death. So what should the Christian's attitude toward death be? First of all, anticipation and excitement. Philippians chapter one, verse 20 and verse 21, according to my eager anticipation and hope that in nothing I will be ashamed. But with that all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether it is by life or by death, for me to live as Christ and to die as gain. Look what Paul said in that verse of scripture, how incredible to live this life. And in Philippians chapter one, he wasn't ready for death. I mean, he talked about it. He even, he even talked about what if it's now, but it wasn't until much, much later. He was even at that time, long before death was here, looking forward to a time he would leave this earth, but said, what's keeping me here right now is you need me. And that's what's keeping me here. My ministry is here. And so I'm looking forward to more ministry, but I'll tell you, they're still coming. The longer I live, that anticipation of going to be with my heavenly father, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Well, what else did 
Paul says. He said this to Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, here is where he was ready to die. By the time that he wrote to Timothy, it was much later than, than he went to the Philippians because the Philippians was one of the first churches he went to on his second missionary journey where that, again, great revival broke out in all of Macedonia. And he had many, 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 many years after that. And now in 2 Timothy chapter 4, the last chapter that Paul wrote, he's anticipating his death in verses 6 through 8. I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Think about that. I just want to isolate verse seven. Look back on your life. Have you fought a good fight? A good fight's a fight that you win. I mean, I'm not saying you won every battle, but you know what? You've won the war. You won it through Jesus. And when it's all said and done, the devil's on the mat and you're still standing. Next of all, I've finished my course. I've come to the end of what God's asked me to do. Next of all, I've kept the faith. The faith here is just simply walking with God, obedience to the word. I have kept that faith from the beginning. Oh, there's been times I've varied. There's been times when temptations come. There's been times when I momentarily said, I don't know if I believe this or not, but I always snap back. Verse eight, so now there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge will give me in that day. And not only to me, but to all those who love his appearing. Are you loving his appearing? His appearing is the rapture of the church. Notice it doesn't say his coming. His coming is when he comes to reign on the earth, but it says his appearing. He's going to come and says, all those who are looking forward in the church age to the coming of Jesus to take this church out of the way, that brings such peace. Did you know the rapture is called the great hope of the church? Do you realize that looking toward forward to the coming of Jesus Christ is a great hope because we cannot conquer this world. No, we can conquer Satan and, and the works of Satan. We can conquer it in people's lives. But as far as changing the entire world and bringing in the, king, the kingdom of God, no, that's for Jesus. And before that time comes, he promised he's gonna come and get us out of here before he comes back and displays his wrath on this earth. So it says again, not only to me, but to those who also love his appearing, looking forward to the coming of Jesus Christ. Our time of death is not a part of God's sovereignty. Now, there's a certain amount of sovereignty attached to it because God knows when we're gonna die. That's his foreknowledge, but there's things we can do in our life to extend our life and to shorten our time period here on earth. Psalm 33 verses 18 to 19 says this, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, reverence him, and on those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. So by following God and trusting in his mercy and walking in his promises, you can extend your life. Psalm 91 and verse 16 says, with long life, I will satisfy him. With long life, God will satisfy Bob. If Bob wants to live longer, there's certain things I can do to live longer. It says, with long life, I'll satisfy him. Notice it's not satisfy God. He'll satisfy me. How long do you want to live? If there's certain things you do, God will let that happen. And there's not like a certain day when God says, it's all over, but God does know that day. But again, with long life, I'll satisfy him and then show him my salvation. How wonderful that really is. And finally, Proverbs 14, 27, before we go to the break, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Reverence for God will keep you on this earth a long time and keep you from the snares of physical death. When we come back, from the break. We're going to talk more about this as we get into many, many more blessings that we have that God has promised just us about death. He knew that there's a natural fear of death and he gave us so many promises and so many wonderful things to look to. And we'll be covering those in the second half of this broadcast. See you right after the break. The awesome grace of God begins with salvation and carries us all the way through this life and into eternity. Because of the work of the cross, God's grace is absolutely free to all who will simply receive it. In this five lesson teaching series, Pastor Bob Yandian highlights the foundational Bible truths concerning four specific types of grace that God has provided for us. The topic titles are Mephibosheth, Convicting Grace, Saving Grace, Living Grace, and Dying Grace. Understanding the nature of the grace of God in each of these areas of life will help you understand the nature of His character and His unconditional love for us. To order types of grace, go to bobyandian.com. A new book just came in. I've been waiting on this book, Theology Simplified. This is a class I teach at Karis Bible College. And I've been waiting to put this into a book. It's eight different theological terms that sound difficult 
but actually are very simple. I just simply think the Bible sometimes is filled with complicated sounding words, but you break it down, it becomes very simple. This book is called Theology Simplified. Let me tell you what all it covers. It covers predestination, it covers reconciliation and sanctification, it covers glorification, justification, redemption, propitiation, and election are all covered in this book. And again, big words with simple meanings. I bring it down to you. Go to my website, bobtheandian.com. You'll find how you can have a copy for yourself. Blessings upon blessings to you. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on part. All right, we're now back from halftime. Did you enjoy the halftime show? Okay, well, I trust you did. We're back from halftime now. We're about to get into the second half of this broadcast talking about, and that is the fear of death, how that grace has been given to us for dying grace. It not only takes care of our new birth, it not only takes care of our Christian life, but carries us in death across to the other side to heaven where we will finally enter into surpassing grace, grace that's beyond your wildest imagination. And we left with Proverbs 14, 27, talking about the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. The fear of the Lord is the reverence for God, putting him as the highest thing in your life. Seek first the kingdom of God. That's the reverence of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. The more that you reverence God, walk with him in life, put him number one, it says it'll cause you to live longer on this earth. Ephesians chapter six, verses one through three, I'm gonna kind of condense it. This is telling parents how to properly raise and train their children and do it in the honor and uh, honoring mom and dad and honoring God. It says there, honor your father and mother. To children, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise attached to it, that it may be well with you. I love that. The Greek word for well is the word you. It's the root for the word prosperous. The word prosperous is you hodos, to have a to have a good trip. And it's simply saying that it may be well with you. You'll have a prosperous journey throughout life and you may live long on the earth. The double promise of God is that on one hand, you have length of days. On the other hand, riches and honor. This is what we're told in the book of Proverbs. When you chase after wisdom and chase after God's word, it's like a beautiful woman. And she comes with one hand. The right hand is length of days. Left hand is riches and honor. And we're told that here. Children can have that. They may not be old enough to understand the word, may not be old enough to read it, but if they'll honor their mother and father, learning to represent, represents authority, learning to respect authority. This is an open door that it will be well with you and you'll live a long time on the earth. We're told in the book of Joshua, follow at the Lord, don't turn from it to the right hand or to the left. Don't start getting caught up in a long life and eating right and all this other stuff that you think is gonna add years to your life, which is all right to eat right. But don't, listen, don't put all your trust in that. Next of all, don't put all your trust in the money. And right hand is length of days, left hand is riches and honor. Don't start seeking after money. Don't start seeking after honor. You keep following after wisdom, the word of God, and these two hands come complete with it. This is what the Lord has told us. What's it say in 3 John 2, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. There's again, prosperity in the word of God. The two hands come complete with it. Next of all, the believer does not have to fear death. Job chapter five, this is a great passage of scripture. You might as well write it down and list if you're older in life and, and you know, you know that death is coming someday. And here's a great verse for you out of Job chapter five. Can anything good come out of Job? The answer is yes. There were momentary glitches in Job's life where he wasn't complaining and griping about everything else. He actually looked to the things of God. And here it is in Job five verses 19 through 26 says, he, that is God will deliver you in six troubles. And in seven, there will no evil touch you. In famine, he'll redeem you from death. In war, from the power of the sword. You shall be hid from the scourge of the tongue. There's a big one, people talking bad about you. Neither will you be afraid of destruction when it comes. At destruction and famine, you will laugh. Neither shall you be afraid of the beast of the earth, for you shall be in league with the stones of the field and the beast of the field will be at peace with you. That simply talks about while you're alive, God wants you to, again, enjoy the earth and all that is around you. The earth will produce for you. You'll have plenty of food with the beast of the field and all this will be at peace with you. Verse 24, and you will know 
that your body will be in peace and you will visit your eternal home and not sin. That's what's talked about. When we leave from here, we're in heaven. We're not going to sin anymore. There won't even be a temptation to sin. We have it down here, but we need to overcome it. But in heaven, there's not even a temptation to sin. You won't have the nature of the flesh in heaven. Verse 25, you will know also that your seed will be great. You're going to leave a prosperous uh, legacy after you and your offspring will be as the grass of the earth. You will come to your grave in a full age like a shock of corn comes in a season. The Lord says on this one, different different ears of corn ripen at different times. He said, you're gonna be one of those shocks of corn that come in its season and you're gonna be very healthy. Psalm 23 and verse four says this, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Man, when it comes to death, you think God's gonna depart from us? Man, from the time I've been born again, I've had the Holy Spirit with me, the presence of Jesus Christ. I can communicate right with God the Father through my mediator, Jesus Christ. So when my time of death comes, you think that's a time when God's gonna back off and say, this one's all by yourself. We're not gonna be with you. No, he says, when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. The Lord is always with us. And even through death, and there's times we might come close to death. We'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death car accidents and things like this. I mean, there have been times in my life where I look back that I came so close to death and didn't see it at the time. And there's also been times when I know Christians have been through car wrecks and the, the, even the police stood there and said, I don't understand this. You should be dead and look at this, you're fine. Or you came out of it quickly. Why? He says, I'll fear no evil. He says, for you are with me. First Corinthians fifteen fifty five. Paul says, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? In other words, when I die, there won't be a sting. It'll just be a passing over from this side to that side. Oh, there might be some momentary pains in my body as I approach death, but by the time I'm into the process of dying, he simply says there's no sting attached to it. He goes on to say, grave, where is your victory? I can laugh at death and laugh at the grave because I can tell you this grave will not have its final victory. I'm gonna receive a resurrection body, this mortal, will put on immortality. This corruption will, will put on incorruption. You know, I've been around again that, like I said, the, the, the uh, uh, beds of many that were dying. And it's interesting, you know, I, and I don't have, I don't have a scriptural proof for every one of these, but I, it's happened so many times. And the first thing they'll see is, I, they'll say is, I see angels in the room. Wow, you know? And they'll say, and the yeah, there's angels around. Can't you see them? In fact, they are between two worlds. In the process of dying, they're seeing this shore leave and they're looking to the other shore because they're on this, you know, this kind of a boat going across and they're moving from one to the other and they can see both worlds. We're over here and we can't see what's on the other shore. They can. And they'll say here in the room, look, can you see the angels? No. And they'll talk about past relatives. They'll say, look, there's my uncle. There's my mom. For the week before she died, every day she said that dad came to visit her. And she, it was just a thing with her. The moment she said that, we went, uh-huh, sure. And by the second day, when she said again, the third day, we thought, my goodness, this is real. I mean, we thought maybe she was hallucinating or something. And she said, we talked about certain things. And my sister said, what do you look like? Because she wanted to know my dad looked like he did when he was really, really young. And my mom just said, it's just Sam. I mean, she didn't even notice in there how young he was. It was just, he came to visit her. And that's interesting. He visited her a few days before she died. Then she went to visit him forever and forever. And next of all, they say, I see Jesus in the room. They'll see Jesus. They'll see angels. They'll see past relatives. And you think, is this really real? I mean, I can't find that in the Bible. I did. I found it in the Bible. When the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, that's at the rapture of the church, the voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ be coming with him. Your personal death in this life is a personal rapture. As the whole church is gonna see Jesus, the archangel, and all the saints who have died before are coming back at the same time, and we're on earth and we'll see this. The Lord's simply saying, you know, these people that went up to heaven, are they gonna miss the rapture from our viewpoint? No, they had a personal rapture before they left this earth. Laying there in bed, they saw Jesus Christ, they saw angels standing in the room, and they saw past relatives in that room, and then that entourage took them back to heaven. So you don't even die alone. Jesus is with you, angels are with you, past relatives are with you. You're going back to heaven in an entourage. I think though, when a sinner dies, they die all by themselves. There's so much fear in it. And I've, I've heard people, I haven't been around the death of a sinner. I've always gone to pray for people that are part of the church and believed in Jesus Christ. But people have told me that when their relatives die, 
died that weren't saved. They said it was a terrible passing. And the fear and the pain, the screaming and all that as they were dying, that's not, shouldn't be the case and won't be the death of a Christian when you keep your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. What are the blessings of dying grace? Luke chapter 16 and verse 22, it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Dying grace is a bridge between this world and heaven. Believers can see both sides. Jesus meets us well, just like he did Stephen in Acts chapter 7, verse 55 and verse 56. He saw heaven and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. So again, the blessings of dying grace is that the rich man died and was buried, but, but it says here of, of uh, Lazarus, it didn't say he was buried. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're buried, but this rich man, can you imagine? what his burial must have been like. He must have had a coffin that was incredible, filled with all kinds of money and gifts and things like that and dressed to the finest. But you know what? It doesn't matter because that is not him anymore. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He went on to hell. The Bible tells us what happened after salvation or after his life because he wasn't saved. He hadn't experienced salvation. But you know what? On the other hand, Lazarus did. He went to Abraham's bosom. Probably they didn't probably give him a burial. This threw him on a heap somewhere and let him burn up on this, this stack outside wherever where dead bodies were and trash was being burned. But you know what? That's not wasn't the end of it. He went to be in Abraham's bosom. He went to be with those who had died and gone on to be with the Lord before him. It says of Genesis 25, 8, Abraham was gathered to his people not only with the Lord, 1 Kings 2.10, David slept with his fathers, not only with Jesus, but also with his fathers. And so in essence, we have our own personal rapture. That's what we're talking about. So when a Christian dies, there's so much for him why this is called dying grace. I come back to this. Why are you fearful of death? Why do you fear those days coming up? Perhaps, you know, you and I are in that rapture generation. I think I am, but so is every generation before this. But you know what? I really don't care. For me to live as Christ, to die as gain. Can you say that? Can you look at death in the face and simply say, you will not have the final victory? Jesus had the final victory at the cross and he conquered you. Man, when I pass over to heaven, it's gonna be a glorious day, a graduation day. From this life into that life, from mortal life into immortal life, I'm going to have that. And one day even come back and receive a resurrection body. All that I can say is, you think life has been good? Eternity is far, far more fabulous, far, far greater than anything you could have had in life. And that's what we're looking forward to. So it comes back to this, set your affections. The word affections there in Colossians means set your attention, set your thoughts on things above and not on things of the earth, for you are dead. As far as earth is concerned, I've already died. And your life is hid with Christ and God. I'm gonna rise to meet him one day and I'll be with him. Read the book of Revelation. And, you know, in, in Revelation, it tells us in Hebrews chapter 10, also saying the same thing, that in heaven are the spirits of just men made perfect. I mean, these men were just here on earth, but now they've been made into perfection and they're in heaven. And one day we'll have a resurrection body. So I'm gonna leave this earth where things aren't perfect. You can go to a place where things are perfect. Everything about heaven is perfect. And I'll just simply go in as part of my rewards, part of my gift that I received when I was born again. And the same is true with you. So it simply comes back to this. Are you saved watching this program? Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. Open your heart right now. And just simply say, Jesus, I get off the throne of my life. I have messed it up every day, but I'm gonna have you sit on the throne of my life because I know you can do it right and you'll be saved. For those of you that have already received Jesus as Lord and Savior, then why don't you just start to say, you know what, I'm gonna quit fearing death. I'm gonna live every day with Jesus Christ and die with Jesus Christ and be carried over into heaven with him too. The best is yet to come. Have a great day, we'll see you next time. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.